Hi right, guys, Hatch Grammar here again today. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far with Major 4 just about to get underway and with the regular season coming to its conclusion. Big questions have been raised. Who have been the worst performing players of the entire season and who have been the biggest flops in the league compared to their expectations? Octane certainly gives his perspective on this. There are so many players though that you could probably put into this category and teams as well. Very much interested in your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Here's Tyler Feller and the boys getting out there to LA ahead of their match that will come up on Friday actually because Ravens are unfortunately for them starting in the losers bracket they were very close to making winners they went three and four you'd have thought that might have been good enough but of course with Los Angeles Thieves taking down the subliners in that reverse sweep they put them in a prime position to get Los Angeles Grillers into the winners bracket instead pretty fire video here that Seattle Surge come out with as well getting ready for major four is their performance going to be as good as uh, their production quality in this particular video? A couple of things to mention here before we move on. Of course, this year is going to be another tray out game for the first time in a rather long time. Black Ops 6, the last time we had one was Black Ops Car War. Feels a rather long time ago, way back in 2020, that Trek came out with that game. But um, yeah, Decimate is still the tray out reaper, it seems. He's playing Express, Redwood, Frequency, let me know, he says. Of course, Express, Black Ops 2, and Black Ops Car War, Redwoods. Black Ops 3. I, mean, I love Red, but like, I honestly love that map so much. I can't help myself, can I? And then Frequency, Black Ops 4 map. But um, yeah, we'll see what they come out with here in Black Ops 6. Dashi says buddy list for Treyarch. And I guess we'll see whether guys like Decimate or other pros really, you know, give it a good go. Because Decimate, formerly in the league, former pro, kind of known to be a bit of a, um, you know, better maybe online or land, stuff like this, in his tenure as a professional player. But um, there could be some pros that having stepped away, it's like guys like Pristini, for example, because Pristini made it clear a while ago that he's looking to potentially go pro in X Defiance and I don't know what the future is going to be for the X Defiant Pro League but um, you know there probably will be something to that effect. I guess the issue is that Treyarch are about to drop their new COD title so um, there might be certain like old school players or players that have been retired or whatever they might think about you know what maybe I'll try and make the return here for Black Ops 6 and um, that could obviously hurt the X Defiance scene if maybe some of the pros were going to go over there instead obviously there's talk about some of these teams we saw the other day that Cloud9 very likely to probably acquire the subliners or at least get involved in the subliners to some degree probably a takeover over the coming seasons is going to happen there which other orgs would be cool to see back i guess that's the question evil genius has actually recently renewed their branding so they actually look like this again which is pretty cool because that's how they did back in the day tk i don't think are coming back certain orgs that have kind of you know disappears like eunited you know i don't think they're going to come back it would be nice to see some of those brands back in the league i just don't think it's especially likely right is possible because they kind of still around but um and then flood is, is is i guess like a Bradley, they were technically that team kind of still exists in the form of the Miami Heretics. Let's talk about some interesting things though going into the major. This was talked about after Optic won Major 3. Their season thus far, third at Major 1, second at Major 2, first at Major 3. And as Jake Maverick said in the replies afterwards, what comes after first? Does it recycle and go to top 12? And of course everyone was laughing and joking around saying, um, you know, there's no way, right? Obviously they're not going to go to top 12. And then you look at the results of the last couple of weeks and you think well hang on a second is there not um you know some evidence that could be the case there's also some interesting stats here the necessary travel put together just some trivia really back in vanguard when seattle surge won major three the next event they came dead last at major four they got 12th so um, you know pred does have a history of going first to 12th and we'll discuss in a second whether that's likely or not for Optic. It would be the second year in a row. Let's say Optic were to come last, which is, to be fair, you can start in winners and still come last. Like, there's no guarantee that when you start in the winners bracket, you're not going to drop to losers one anyway and come in last place. Like, it's still possible, right? It's just like, for now, with Optic starting in losers, it's more likely that they end up in top 12 position, and we'll talk about it more in a second. But um, Optic did that last year in Toronto. They had a really stinking major, and then they had to go to the World championship a couple of weeks later which of course they did not win major five last year the ravens are winless on land got their first land win of the season boston is trying to do the same thing this year at major four so 
So, yeah, Boston will play, I think, the loser of, is it Seattle and Vegas, potentially, in the loser's bracket. New York has been in the grand finals of the final major for the last two years in a row. And also, Los Angeles Thieves has won major four the last two years in a row. So I'm not really sure how you're meant to resolve that one. Basically, some of these stats are going to come to an end, aren't they? Let's be perfectly honest. And major four last year, which also had no fans. Thieves and Optic were in the grand finals, and um, they could possibly play in losers round one, and therefore neither could, you know, not both of them could make it to the grand finals, so that it is possible if Thieves were to make a crazy run through winners and Optic were to make a crazy run through losers. And that is pretty much that. But I wanted to share what Octane had to say on the question of who's been the worst player and who's been the biggest flop, because they're not quite the same thing. There's been some players that were terrible, but what were the expectations of said players? There's loads of players who committed to this category, so let's have a look. Worst player of the year? Gotta be like, fucking got our ex. Um, biggest flop of the year? Probably someone from New York, like Sib, Sib Kiz. Something like that. That's from the expectations they had prior to the season. Ace on Vegas. Yeah, but he only had a couple series. Yeah, got our ex only had a couple series too. Maybe Ace on Ace on Vegas, got our ex. Wake. Yo, wait. Low key, it might be Wake. Either, okay, biggest flop is someone from New York, like Cyber Kids, and then in fucking Wake, bro. Holy shit. So these are the rankings on the season for the lowest KD in the entire league. And this is what we find. Now, KD isn't everything. You can also look at it from Slayer ratings. This is organized here by Slayer rating, which is this number where you see some players with decent KDs that find themselves rather lower down. But let's just look at KD because... I think generally it sells the picture of which players have been worse than we especially anticipated them to be. Godorex has the worst numbers in the entire league. And in terms of worst player of the season, it probably goes to Godorex, to be honest. He was on the Royal Ravens team at the start of the season, not for very long. He never made it to the major. He only played online cards. So maybe you say, maybe it's a bit unfair because he didn't play that much cards. Maybe he could have got better over time. I think, honestly, though, Godorex, like, he was so bad compared to what people thought. Like, his Slayer rating as well is just so much lower than, like, anybody else's down here. Even, like, Awakening, and he may well be the biggest flop we'll get to in a second. But it is tough in some sense to look past Godorex because he was good back in MW19. A player that, um, you know, was considered to be, well, especially maybe on LAN or whatever. No, he never got to play a LAN, unfortunately, for him in Boston. But possibly a similar situation would have developed regardless. But he was expected to be pretty damn good you know he grinded for years in challenges he'd just won the challenges world cup the previous year and had a really good you know really good stats in doing so and then came in and just got bopped around so godorex is definitely down there right but he didn't play for that long a seems stint on vegas was just the worst thing ever and like that individual stint might well put a seam in the conversation but um you know did he flop precisely that's another question because you want to look at kd is you're looking at the worst players the players i think that flopped compared to expectations cami potentially one of them even afro as well i think afro and cami both their stint on the thieves was definitely i didn't think they'd be great but i thought they'd be much better i think than they were and all the talk was okay cami me, you know, 150 HP, kind of Cold War vibes or whatever. He's going to get back to that point. Didn't really, let's be honest, didn't even get especially close. Although in challenges, he's kind of been cooking a little bit. Same story applies to Afro, to be fair. I had lots of expectations for him, so I think he was one of the big flops of the season. Of these players, though, Awakening has got to be, like, I would say the key standouts here because... I mean, Accuracy and Big Wake are both here. Like, they both have sub point nines, which is just, like, tragic, isn't it? Like, that was your AR duo for some time in the league. And I know that Accuracy's numbers were better when he had Wake by his size, but, like, both ARs were below a point nine, and Wake was just, like, really bad. Like, especially alongside Accuracy, I thought that Awakening would, like, look really good, dropping one point, you know, one's bare minimum, to be honest. But no, he had one of the worst Slayer ratings in the entire league. I guess it just wasn't his game. But um, I think that if, if I had to vote for one player as kind of like flop of the year, it probably would be Big Wake. But um, there's many other ways to look at it, right? Just because were the expectations for Rocker really that great? Probably not. And that's why you've also got to consider some of the players on the Boston Breach. I think there's no doubt in my mind. I know that I've got to scroll up a long way to find it here. But, um, you know, a guy like Snoopy, here he is with a very high Slay rating. But has Snoopy been a, been a major flop this year? Because look, 0.98 KD. 
80 rating in terms of slay rating, you know, his numbers don't look bad, especially given his role. But, you know, Snoopy came into the season expected to have a big breakout year, potential Rookie of the Year candidate. He's never been close because his play style, while entertaining, there's questions as to how much, you know, map knowledge and decision making, like whether these other factors of his game really aren't there. And obviously the team has been so woeful that, you know, a player like Snoopy, Priester as well, even Slasher to a certain extent, but I'm not really sure that's quite the case. You know, there was expectations big time on this Boston team. They were meant to be like the fifth best team. They'd spent the fifth most money, probably more than that, probably like third or second most money, to be honest, forming this uh, Boston team this season. But um, didn't happen, right? They were nowhere near one of the worst teams the CDL has ever seen over the last few titles. And Snoopy and Priester, but, you know, they've been a part of that from start to finish. So they've got to be in the conversation as well. You can possibly also look at maybe Clay on the Ravens. Because, um, you know, his numbers, especially online, just haven't really been good at all. But on LAN, he has been quite significantly better. So um, I don't think I'd go far to say, like, Clay is flopped or anything. But um, he just, you know, hasn't been maybe as good as I was hoping him to be. The other names that I highlighted were on the subliners. Because I think if you're going to look at another team kind of flopping... And actually, before I say that, got to quickly talk on Seattle Surge, right? Because if I look at the bottom of this list here, it's probably not far off finding Arsatis, who... Uh, Personally, I just didn't have many expectations for Arsties this year, which is why I don't really have him in the category of flops because I don't really think he did much different to what I thought he would do. But I know there was thoughts this year that, you know, Arsities and Illy as that AR duo, you know, they were going to be on point. In some sense, both of them flopped. Like, Illy, not from an individual perspective, but just the fact that he's no longer in the league for, yeah, extenuating circumstances, to say the very least. But um, Arsities, the fact that, you know, two-time champ coming in, this was really his chance to get redemption or whatever and um you know i guess we can see in terms of slay rating that he was right down here 63rd in the entire league down there with assault and purge i didn't even mention purge really but it's just like there were no expectations on purge so and i think in hindsight people actually realized he was probably more impactful than his number says that he was so there is that whole side of the story as well but rc's was definitely down there with flop of the year candidates no doubt about it the other thing though you've got to talk about the subliners because they are the world champions still for last season they came into this year expecting expected to uh, probably at least win an event. Of course, they made the controversial change, Sib in, Priester out. But Sib, I would say for the first few months of the season, Sib was definitely a flop. But over the last two months, I would say, Sib has really turned it around and has probably been, maybe apart from Hydra, their best player over the last month or so. So I think that Sib is coming good. Difficult to say that he's flopped. Skies, it is interesting, actually, if you find Skies' numbers right about here, that um, he's not, well, actually, yeah, here he is, 52nd in terms of Slayer rating, 1.05, which for Skies isn't even that good to be fair and um, a relatively low Slayer rating. Now I know he's an AR player but I have been somewhat underwhelmed by Skies this year. My target though is probably Kismet just because last year he had a 1.51 or whatever in the championship grand final to win the world championship. Slam Scrappy and the boys 5-0. You know the bulldog MVP of the grand finals like you know Hydra and Kismet best SMG duo in the game. There were expectations that sure Hydra's maintained that level to some extent. Kismet hasn't really very inconsistent poor search and destroy especially on LAN so you know I think Kismet has flopped to some degree given the fact that subliners have flopped as an organization because you know they were meant to win something they've not even sniffed a, a deep run of the tournament as yet but you know very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below just wanted to close out really with a couple of predictions for the tournament right because the Opta guys put together this bracket obviously they've got uh, I think they had phase winning in the ends ultra phase in the grand finals most have got ultra phase in the grand finals I feel like that makes sense the big debate really is are Optic going to make a loser's run or are they not? And I think most brackets I've seen have had Optic making a loser's run. The bracket that we put together on Dope Trigger is Optic going up top 12, which is definitely a hot take, right? Because you're going to land, but you've also got to understand Optic have not played good COD lately. Can they turn it around? Sure. Will they is another question. They also have a pretty difficult first round game. They play either Thieves or Heretics. I have no idea who's going to win out of that series. We were torn on it when we were coming up with these <laughs> this bracket. And the chat poll said Miami like 55% said Miami, 45% said Thieves. So we took Miami to win that one. And I do think that Thieves, on LAN, they've been very suspect. But this is a bit of a different on LAN scenario. 
you know, there's no fans. So I think the Thieves actually have a better chance to make a run. I do expect that whatever happens in this loser's round one, that team to make a serious run, whether it is Miami or Thieves or Optic, I feel like that team will make a run. We've gone for Thieves making, you know, maybe they're due a bit of a run. I don't know. And obviously it is a hot take here sending out Optic top 12, but I feel like of all the bracket predictions I've seen, most of them have had Optic make it a run. And I'm like, there's definitely a chance it doesn't happen. So we shall see on Friday whether that happens or not. But very much interested in your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.